All right, ready? All right, you guys are going to do a Q&A with me here. You're going to ask me any questions that you want to because uh, you've been watching my videos for a long time. 2016. So, tw since 2016. That's uh, since the beginning. That's when this whole thing started. Yeah. Okay, what are your questions? So, um, you're previously from America, Sacramento, and then you lived in uh, Bangkok, and then you moved to Pattaya. Yep. What, which we say would be better which we prefer Bangkok or America uh, for me I choose Bangkok over America but I choose Pattaya over Bangkok I would be happy living in Bangkok I'm happy living in Pattaya but I prefer Pattaya over Bangkok so, and uh, in America we all know that the gyms are huge like it's a good place to train and to bodybuild versus in Thailand which we prefer and why the gyms in Thailand versus the US uh, okay, so it's true. The gyms in America are so there's some really amazing gyms, but I like freedom, and I have more freedom in some of the gyms in Thailand than I do in America. Like I can take my shirt off and I can pose in front of the mirror, and it all depends. In America, there's some hardcore gyms you can do this also, but I'd say there's there's more of them here in Thailand where it's just like less rules. I find that you know, especially like a lot of gyms are owned by foreigners. And a lot of foreigners come here to get out of these countries like America that are super oppressive with so many bureaucracy and so many rules. So like even the owners that come over, they want to open a business that also represents freedom. So I like training in gyms like this where I feel freedom, where I can take my shirt off, I can pose, I can talk about steroids all I want, and I feel accepted. Tony, how do you like being the villain of bodybuilding? So I'm okay with being the villain. Uh, I, I got to be something because I got to be a character that people will listen to so that I can get my message out. So yeah, my message is about freedom and the ability to have the knowledge and access to the chemistry to enhance ourselves. But people who hate this chemistry, you know, anti-steroid people, you know, natty advocates, they don't want people to know or hear about this chemistry. They don't want people to know it exists. They want people to have access to it for whatever sick and twisted sadistic reason is the way I look at it. But they think that I'm a bad influence, that I'm causing kids to get on drugs and kids to get on steroids. I feel like I'm actually the hero, but by the mainstream, I have to be portrayed as the villain. But the mainstream portraying me as a villain is actually portraying me as a hero to the people that I care about, which are the people that actually want freedom. So how could I be anything other than a villain in the mainstream if I'm gonna be a hero outside the matrix, the two are opposites. So I'll be a villain in the mainstream and a hero outside the matrix. And I'm okay with that. Alcohol and bodybuilding. Those alcohol and bodybuilding, I don't, I don't drink much alcohol. Uh, I feel like there's other drugs. I, I, I like drugs, but they're like, I look at the risk versus the benefit. People think alcohol is okay because it's common, legal, but that doesn't make it okay just because all the sheep will drink it and because it's legal. Those are not two of the factors I use as criteria to decide what kind of drugs I use. I look at risk versus benefits. The risks of alcohol far outweigh the benefits. There are other drugs that are far more effective at the reasons that people use alcohol that don't have the drawbacks of alcohol. Comparing the culture between uh, America and in Thailand, which do you think would be best suited for bodybuilding and to drive you towards your, your goals and your, your like in terms of bodybuilding and business? In America, there's a lot of uh, jealousy and criticism and people putting each other down. And I know that that happens everywhere in the world. It's a normal human thing. But in Thailand, it's just there's so much respect and acceptance on the surface. Okay, behind your back, maybe they talk. About, I don't care. I don't care what people say about my, my back. I care what my experience is and my environment around me. And everybody is so respectful and uh, appreciative and grateful for when you step out and you do something interesting or different here. So like bodybuilders I find are, are very well respected in Thailand and in America it's more like it's respected if you're into bodybuilding but if you're not then people are like jealous of you or like angry at you or try to turn it into a negative thing. You know and so I feel like it's more supported on a cultural social level in Thailand than it is in America even though it's much more common in America to bodybuild. Do, do you think uh, Thailand is better for bodybuilding like in terms of the, the food that's available, the pharmacies and the overall culture, how accepting they are? 
So America's pretty good for bodybuilding food because you can go to Costco and you can cook your own food. If you're eating out at restaurants, America's not very good for bodybuilding, healthfully. But yeah, Costco is better than what we have here in Thailand. But if you don't show up, shop, shop at Costco or other places where you're buying like really bulk quality cheap foods, then Thailand is better. So like for most people, Thai, like if you take most Americans' bodybuilding lifestyle versus Thailand, Thailand wins. Uh, in Thailand, you can get chicken and rice and eggs for practically free. You can go to 7-Eleven and you can build a bodybuilding meal 24 hours a day on any street corner. Now they have lactose-free protein drinks that only cost a dollar fifty. So like you can survive off of these high quality protein drinks. I'd say because of the convenience and the low cost and the accessibility and the fact that there's a lot of things open 24 hours in Thailand, like Thailand has the perfect situation for bodybuilding food. And it's safe to walk around at nighttime and everything. And what? It's safe to walk around at nighttime. Safe, safe to walk around at night in Thailand. Night I don't out. feel safe walking around in America in a lot of places at nighttime. I feel like Thailand is much, much safer than America. Why are Westerners so closed-minded? They're not as open-minded as other societies, you think? Uh, the media. The media wants the whole world, actually, but especially Americans, to think that Americans are better and have it better than the rest of the world. Uh, because that's America's way of being imperialistic and trying to take over the whole world. It's like saying, America number one, you want to be like America? Okay, we're going to help you conquer your country. We're going to turn it into what we call a democracy, even though it's a dictatorship, and control these other countries. And, and it's just part of the whole media scheme. And just like most countries and most people don't get out of their bubble and they don't know. Like in Thailand, you go to the villages, they have no idea what life is like in America other than what they saw in a movie or something like that. They have no idea what the reality is. Same thing with Americans. Americans have no idea what's going on with the rest of the world. But what makes it worse is that America is a continent separated from everything else. At least if you're in Europe, you have some exposure to some of the other countries around you or some of the people around you. But in America, you just have Americans. Like most Americans, they've only ever met like maybe Mexicans and maybe a couple Russians. Right? So they don't they don't know what the culture is like outside of the world. And then also Americans are, are because of the media and the government are made to believe that like their culture is right and the rest of the world is wrong and they need to correct that and they need to with military and social and social media enforce that on the rest of the world. And once you build an ego around that, how can you break that ego? Like as an American, part of your ego is built around the fact that that you think you're better than everybody else and the way what you think is right. So if you start questioning that, you start shattering your ego, which is a good thing, but most people aren't willing to do that because it's an uncomfortable process. So with you being an American living in Thailand, would you say you have a lot of things being uh, catered to you differently? Like, would, would you say like the locals treat you differently just because you're an American? Well, you know, we have a tourist culture here, so there's a lot of Thai people's businesses rely on foreigners bringing money in, which is great. So yeah, they see you as a customer, but they, in, other, in some countries they try to rip you off, right? I never experienced this in Thailand. If I accidentally give someone a, a cashier too much money, they'll hand it back to me. If I accidentally leave my phone somewhere, someone will bring it to me. Like no, I've never had anybody rip me off in Thailand or overcharge me or steal anything from me, right? So I feel like I'm really respected, like I'm a customer that these Thai people are trying to get money from me, but they're trying to do it in the right way, which is treating me right so that I want to give them my money, not forcing me to. Uh, and then just socially, um, I think Thai people are like really, they, they really lack I mean, this sounds kind of racist, but there's, I can't imagine anybody disagreeing with me. They lack creativity. They lack innovation. They rely on foreigners to bring the innovation and the creativity. They will work, and they are disciplined, and there's a lot of them, and they have, like, low expectations for pay and all this stuff. So, like, they've got a great workforce, but they need that innovation to come, and I think they recognize that. And so like when an, you as a foreigner, I as a foreigner, or anybody as a foreigner comes, we also bring with us some of this innovation that also improves their culture and improves their business and improves their environments as well. So I think that they respect that as well. And then also, whether you're a foreigner or not, they're taught to respect themselves and respect each other. This is something we lack in America. Americans don't respect themselves and they don't respect each other, generally speaking. 
and here they do. So, you know, no matter whether you're a foreigner or not, you just feel more respected here. And it's nice because I'm actually a very respectful person. Like, I don't belong in America because there's not a lot of people that are so respectful like me. And so when I'm here, I feel like I can be even more respectful and not be taken advantage of for it. In America, I'm like more respectful, more giving, and I get taken advantage of for it, or it somehow turns into a negative thing. But here, I can be part of this culture. You know, I like to bow to people. I like to say hello to people. I like to be extra nice to people. I like to smile to people. I like to do a little something extra for people. And that's the Thai culture. What would be your top five tips for someone who is looking to move to Thailand and to pursue like business and to even improve their bodybuilding career? Well, it's always source of it. You have to have a source of income. So you want to be able to get your job to where you can either get a job here or get a job work remotely. But I think a lot of Americans, if they really restructure just a little bit, they could find they could actually do their same job remotely. But there's a time difference. So you might end up, you know, if you had to be on the American time zone, you might be up staying up at night and, and uh, sleeping during the daytime. Um, you have to have connections. No matter where you go in the world, you want to have a connection. Like, you want to have some kind of insider to tell you. Like, if you're living here and a friend comes, and he and you can tell him, hey, you, here's where you get your SIM card, here's what bank to use, here's what apps to put on your phone. Like, all of this is so helpful. So have some kind of connection. And then uh, don't, don't get locked. Like, when you free yourself from America, don't get locked down into, like, some long-term contract here in Thailand either. Be mobile. You know, be okay with less having less stuff. You have to detach yourself from material items because those will weigh you down. Those will li become liabilities. You want to be able to free. You want to be able to move. And then you'll find what location and what people you belong around uh, if you're free to jump on those opportunities. So those are some of the... T and it doesn't take as much as you think to retire in Thailand. But also, like, you can... A lot of people will come over here. Let's say I have one friend came over here with $80,000. Now with $80,000, you can retire for life in Thailand if you do it right, if you know what you're doing. But he blew it all in one year on bar girls. Uh, and he was thinking to himself, oh, $80,000 will last decades with bar girls. But it can add up, like you go to the, but you don't realize like how many girls and how many drinks and how much things just add up, add up. So it's like pace yourself, right? And don't get taken, a, you're not gonna get, not, no one steals or anything, but like, you you could pay three thousand baht for a girl, or you could pay one thousand baht for a girl. So learn how to start paying one thousand baht. Learn how to quickly shift from being paying like tourist costs to paying like what us locals pay for things. Yeah. Out of all the countries in the world, why Thailand? Did it open your eyes in a special way? Uh, food, culture, women. What? There was other countries I'd be happy living in, like Colombia, you know, Mexico, Philippines, um, even Taiwan, maybe. But Thailand has the fastest internet, and it's got, it's not the cheapest country, but it, it has the most, like for the amount of money, you have access to the most amount of things. So you can get imports from, it's hard to get imports from a, a lot of other, from China it's really easy. Like buy stuff from China all day, right? So I like importing things. I like buying a lot of supplements and uh, workout equipment and electronics. So I can get all that stuff from China um, versus some countries that, you know, you can't necessarily get stuff from China so easily. And uh, the internet, the infrastructure, the Thai culture, the happy people, the you know the trusting, optimistic, respectful people in this culture. Uh, and uh, I figured because I had Bangkok Airport, I'd be able to get to any other country so I could vacation anywhere else. And uh, had the perfect balance because I had Bangkok, which I could do for business, and I had Pattaya, which I could do for lifestyle within a two-hour drive. So. There's not a lot of places in the world where you also have like the best city in the world and the best beach life in the world within a two hour drive from each other. Yeah. I went to Singapore. Yeah. And uh, that's a beautiful place and the people are great. I love the Singapore people are smart, um, great to communicate with, but man, the bodybuilding lifestyle is a little bit lacking there. Yeah. Like there's uh, it's just it's just a small island. There's not a lot of people and there's not a lot of bodybuilders. So like there's no like, there was there was no like really major gyms or really major fitness things, but that'll grow over time. Yeah, yeah I remember you posting about you loving the, the beef jerky. The one that covered in honey. Yeah, that tastes, that tastes really good. Yeah. yeah, Singapore food is good, yeah. 
Have, yeah, they have high class food. We also have the Chinese, cheap Chinese food type stuff. Yeah, costs things cost a lot of money in Singapore. Yeah. So see, I, I couldn't live in Singapore because it's too small of an island, not a big enough fitness community, not as much freedom. Like there's a lot of rules in Singapore, like there is in Dubai. But Singapore is great for business. So like, if I was a young guy, I was saying I'd move to Singapore, or I'd move to Dubai. I'd make my money there, and then I'd move to one of these other countries. Yeah. I think a lot more bodybuilders will start coming to Thailand. I mean, it's pretty yeah. far, it's pretty far away. It's yeah. a big commitment. Yeah, most people don't want to get out of their bubble no matter how far away it is. And yeah, it is far, and it does cost a little bit of money to get here. But I think when people watch the videos and they see, like, when everything was else was locked down, yes, we had our own lockdowns, but when everything else was locked down, we were still partying hard, we were in the bars, we were having the fitness lifestyle and the rest of the world was locked down. You know, I think at that point a lot of people said, oh, someday, someday I'm gonna move to Thailand or I'm gonna go to Thailand. And now they're just kinda, it's in the back of their mind and, and when the opportunity comes up, they will. It just depends on like their job and their income. It's a money thing, an obligation thing usually. I mean, one of the things about America, it becomes such a prison because Everybody spends more money than they have, and they, they they don't own their car, they don't own their house, they don't own their they don't even own their clothes. They have debt to pay. So how can they take a break from servicing their debt to come and live in, in Thailand? You know. So I'd say, and then back to the tips. Like number one tip: don't incur any more debt in your own country. Like don't go buy the newest car. Don't get a mortgage. You know, just put your money in cryptocurrency. We remain flexible. Don't become a slave to assets so that you can come to places like this and see if you like it. I agree. All right. All right. Be swollen soul, friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution.